What's up, Pyromaniacs? Pyrostasis here. We are back in the world of FTB, and I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff I have been working on since uh, the last episode that I did earlier last week. Uh, you'll notice that I've got uh, some objects here. You may or may not know what these objects are. These objects are apiaries. They are used to, uh, to breed bees, and the bees... Uh, do their little thing and they produce things or provide effects and etc etc so right now i've just got meadow bees going uh this is a meadow bee queen you'll see over here on this far left side this is her life cycle so as she's alive she has a possibility of producing honeycombs while she's in and, and doing her thing and she needs flowers to uh oh little, dude these angry thom craftian little bastards are just Ridiculous! They are so mean. Okay, there we go. I want to make sure I had my sound settings right. I can't actually hear the game sound because I was playing Xbox or PlayStation earlier, and my sound's a little screwed up. So, hopefully, nothing loud was playing in the background. If so, I apologize. So, anyways, uh, you can see her little life cycle. While she's up, she'll produce things, and each different type of bee has a different specialty. Some will produce. Uh, honeycombs like this. Some will produce uh, different types of honeycombs, propoluses, or propoli, or little balls of stuff. I call them honey poops, but I don't know what they really are. And uh, you'll notice that sometimes, or when she's done, she'll die. And then when she dies, she produces a princess and a certain number of bees. I don't know if they ever have a chance to produce a different kind or another princess. I haven't seen that yet, so it basically seems like if you want these bees, you've got to go and get yourself enough bees to continuously produce them because uh, you can't mate two drones. You'll notice I put a, a princess up here, and then I put a, a Mac Daddy drone in the bottom, and then they mate it, and now we have a pregnant princess. And so she, again, is going to do her little stuff. And you can actually see the little bees flying around. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but they're, they're kind of zipping around. And um, each type of bee has its own environmental preferences and its own... I don't think I've got any of the other... Yeah. As you can see right here, I've got a marshy queen. Well, marshy queens, uh, they are marsh bees. They come from the swamp that's on the other side of Steve's base over in that direction. And they... I'm not sure exactly what they require. Uh, sh I don't have all of the stuff set up yet, so it won't actually tell me. I believe if uh, this right here is a bee data bank, and as you breed them, it kind of tells you uh, what their abilities and such are, which kind of helps out. But the problem I've got is there's a lot of bee technology I haven't gotten. Uh, I, I kind of like watched a B tutorial and unfortunately B tutorials aren't like normal tutorials you can't just watch like five minutes and then get what you need out of them it was like a six hour B tutorial and I think I watched like two hours of it before I was like well fuck it I know enough about bees I can do that shit on my own I don't need them help and yeah well this is why absolutely nothing is happening is because I didn't watch the whole thing so I'm gonna figure out bees one of these days this is one of those things that's like I really want to learn, but at the same time, it just annoys the hell out of me so bad because I can't figure it out and it's not like other things. So for now, I've stopped messing with it. I'm just done. So what we are going to be doing today, um, let me show you guys. We have our little creosote, uh, uh, creosote thing that you've got coming up from here. And this right here is where we're going to be pumping all of our fuel in. So what I'm going to basically be doing, and I, I've got a lot of iron for it, but we're going to make our creosote tanks probably right here. And I'm going to have one big-ass creosote tank here, another big-ass creosote tank here, and then we're going to set up our little uh, creosote, or our coke forge thingies, because me and Steve are going to be working pretty hardcore on, um, what do you call it? Uh, railcraft here shortly we're gonna be making some really cool rails well hopefully it's gonna be really cool the last thing that i've done that i haven't shown you guys is over here i did make a farm let me show you guys this the reason i made the farm uh the apiaries over there they require um they require a carpenter to do what they do well unfortunately you need to have a oh god oh oh god what the what is going on Steve just broke my farm! Oh. 
So Steve's apparently having problems with the farm, so he thought it'd be a good idea to come over and play with my farm, which apparently involved breaking my farm and blowing it up. Because Steve's a dick. He's a big meanie poo-poo head. I hate you, Steve. I hate you so much. Anyways, uh, this farm right here I use for seeds. Uh, these seeds can be put into a squeezer, and then the squeezer will then... Um, oh my god, he made a mess. Good, good lord, Steve. Oh, I hate him so much. So anyways, um, use the seeds, you, you squeeze them in a squeezer, which produces seed oil, and then the seed oil is used in the making of aviary, or apiaries, which is one of the things I needed to do my bee stuff, so. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and skip ahead till we start working on the uh, coke ovens and such. And we'll be right back. Of course, I, I gotta kill Steve first. He, he has to die for this. So our farm has been restored to its previous glory, but I, when I was flying over to see, Steve was having problems with his farm, so I, I flew over to help him. And this is, this is Steve's feeble attempt at, at reaching my level of awesomeness and glory with my setup. And it is, it is, it is definitely not as cool. And you can see, you can see we'll sneak up on his base real quick. He's recording, so we gotta be quiet. But that's, that's his little setup. You can see his little farm off there in the distance was what he was trying to do. And apparently he wasn't creative. It meant to left or right click and left click or something. But I didn't notice this, but I have this massive giant like asshole coming out of my base. I mean, look at this thing, dude. I mean, like, wait, is that my tracks down here? I think this is my tracks. Is it? This is my tracks. Holy crap. Yeah, there's my little mining rat. Oh my gosh. So I've, I've got this, like, apparently my, my, my cave system has, has a, or my, my castle has a butthole. So we, we have found this. Now, I wanted to try this. These are two different types of mushrooms. Yeah, okay. So we're going to break this, take that, and then we're going to break this and take that. And I want to see if either of these might count. Um, what do you call it? Oh shit, please tell me I'm not in creative anymore. Did I get out of creative? Damn it. There we go. Um, I want to see if these will count towards the... What do you call it? The flowers from my little annoying green things. Now, of course, I don't think I'm going to be able to place these because uh, the light level is high. Alright, do we have them? Yeah, we got one brown mushroom and two red mushrooms. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn creative mode back on so we can get out of Satan's asshole. Or Castle's Asshole. Whichever you prefer. What? Lava? Ooh. <laughs> and a little Help! Help, dude! Look, he, he was looking at me. He was like, dude, get me out of here, please! Oh, that sucks, bro. Hope you don't get too tired, man. Don't don't get tired. <laughs> oh, that's poor little chicken. You know, that, he might actually turn into, like, extra tasty crispy right there. Okay. I don't know why the sun didn't move the first time I clicked it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, he just bumps into lava. The water cools him off, so he comes spitting out, like, extra tasty crispy from uh, KFC. It'd be awesome. Original recipe, bitches. Okay, so we need to come up... Um, I need to come up with a way to keep the light level fairly low on these, because obviously mushrooms don't grow in high light level so i'm gonna try something and see if i can make this work again you know i told you guys i probably wasn't gonna mess around with this anymore because this this thing drives me absolutely insane but I, I think this might work and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cover this area here we go there we go keep going all right beautiful and we're gonna do this and i don't know if this light level will be low enough i'm hoping it will but it may not. There we go. I mean, that's that's kind of covering it up. You know, it's kind of getting dark in there, hopefully. You know, this is me trying to reassure myself that, that the level of darkness is enough. And I'm just going to seal this off here. And then we'll go ahead and just seal that right there. That ought to make it fairly dark. All right, we're going to try planting a mushroom. Wait, is, is this even the... Yeah, and I guess we could place... What do you call it? one right there and that ought to like that's that's mildly dark in there right right you guys are supposed to agree with me nod your heads please all right so we've got our little uh marshy queen in there we're gonna try and get shit okay we're gonna dig down here there we go i'm dropping the hole 
Oh, now nah, it's raining. All right, so we're going to put a mushroom right... Oh, it won't let me plant them. Yeah, apparently it's too light here. Well, that is just poopy flavored ice cream. I mean, here I am. I made this glorious amount of darkness for them, and the mushrooms won't. The mushrooms won't plant. Let's see if I can plant some green or some of these brown ones up in there. Negatory, and it may be because this is too low. Anyways, enough with this crap. Let's get over here and let's start working on our tank. We are gonna need. Whoops. Stupid build craft pipes. There we go. We are going to need a crafting table to do what I'm wanting to do. So, oh, well, there's one right there. Well, hello. Yeah, that was actually the one that was used for my, uh, what do you call it? Oh, my God, the farm. There we go. Go away, rain. Okay, so what we need to do over here is we need to make some... And, of course, there's already a damn crafting table. You know what? I'm not going to use you. I'm not going to use you. All right. So, we need to learn the tanks. So, iron tank wall, iron tank gauge, iron tank valve. These are the three basic setups that we're going to be needing. As you can see, they need iron plates, and an iron plate is simply four iron ingots in a rolling machine. Well, we do happen to have a rolling machine back over in our base. Now, I, I made... I, I, I did want to show you guys this because it's sloppy and it will probably make the builders on my base cry. But I won't tell them if you won't. I made myself a nice little secret entrance and I, I need to hook this up and rig it with... Uh, what do you call it? The... Uh, pistons! There we go. English. Speak it. Uh, where are my rolling machines? Is it... Is this a rolling machine? Whoa, what the... No. This is not a rolling machine. Where is my rolling machine? Is that it? Rolling machine! I've already gotten started with it, apparently. And that's going to be a steam engine, which we don't want to use. Damn. I'm not still in creative, am I? No. Okay. All right, so we're going to need a peat engine here. So let me get this set up real quick. And we will we will get that rolling. We need copper. We need... And I'm sorry, my brother is being very loud. You may hear him screaming in the background. He is uh, playing... What do you call it? Uh, Path of Exile with my father, I think. They're enjoying it a little too much. If they could, if they could enjoy things a little bit quieter, it would be... It would be much preferred. So I may have to go kick him in the nuts in a minute if he keeps bellowing. Alright, where is... Where the hell is all my copper, dude? I had like 60 stacks. Or not 60 stacks. I had like two stacks of copper. This is what happens when you have the organization of, I don't know, a tornado. You can't find anything. Oh my god, yes. This right here is so organized. There's my copper. Told y'all I had some. Some of you guys were shaking your head. Poro ain't got no damn copper. There it is, bitches. What's up now? Okay. So, we're going to come in here while our little peat bog is working. I'm probably going to have to make a secondary peat bog soon um, because it's going to take me a while to get the bilutimus or whatever you call it, peat. So, we need some trees. I know I got trees. I got trees for days somewhere. Dude, if I have to go back out there for tree... Oh my... Ah, goose fraba. Goose fraba. Of course, you know, there's all the wood that I used. That was that was my trees over there. There we go. I moved all my trees out here. Uh, the reason I got so many trees is obviously the aviaries require a crap ton of trees. And that's what I've been focusing on for the past, like, two or three days until I rage quit. And was like, you know what? Pyro and bees at the current time. That's the second time the bees mod has, like, defeated me. It defeated me in... Um, what was it? Feed the beast? I was I was incapable of producing what was needed to be produced. It was it was a sad day. I had to concede that it, it kicked my ass. And I don't like conceding that things kick my ass. It it kind of kind of bugs me, but I think I can understand bees. I'm just gonna have to put a little bit more time into it. You know, and the whole birthing system with genetics and things like that. I mean that's that's fairly complicated. There's a lot of people that can't understand that, right? Right? You guys should all be nodding your heads and agreeing with me to make me self... Make, my, make me self... Make me self feel better! 
turned into like Trogdar the Troll there for a second. Do we have any glass in here? Yes, and just enough. Thank you, God. All right, so we're going to make this, and I don't have any bilutinous peat, do I? Well, peat in general. Hopefully this thing is being productive. Yes, it is. Thank you, God. All right, so let's zip over here. Jump back into our secret chamber. Okay, so we need to put the... Oh, uh, we got pistons. Pistons are... I know I've got pistons. I made like eight pistons. I know we've got pistons. Oh, come on, for the love of everything. There's no way I lost my pistons. Okay, you're sorted. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, we're also going to be touching uh, on Thomcraft pretty quick. There is some really cool stuff in Thomcraft that I need, and they're probably out there. I'm just going to make another one because I'm lazy. Um, we're probably going to be covering Thomcraft fairly soon. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to cover Thomcraft and EE. Uh, the reason I've been kind of holding off uh, on covering those two, whoops, is both of the mods are still kind of a work in progress, and I kind of wanted to wait until they were actually finished because, you know, I didn't want to cover it, and then like a couple weeks later I have to recover it. Not that I don't mind playing with the mod, I just, you know, I, for organization's sake, I didn't want you guys getting, like, confused with, like, the three different types of mods and whatnot. Alright, I'm actually going to bust that wall in the back out. And the reason I'm busting that out is so we can put our redstone torch back up in there and it'll be hidden. Because peat engines do require a redstone torch. Perfect. And then we drop you here. And then we put you in there, and bada boom, bada bing, it is producing. There we go. So now we've got that. We're going to go ahead and stack these up. Um, what the hell just happened? There we go. Perfect. Beautiful. So with this, this is going to give us the ability to stamp out uh, quite a bit of these iron plate building blocks. And they are required to build the... Oh my god, iron, there we go, iron tanks. So there are three different setups from here. There's the valves, the gauge, and the walls. I think the gauge is what allows you to see um, like how much stuff is in there. I believe the valve is the actual place where you load it. So you have to have a valve on the side that you're putting a pipe into so that it'll load. I'm not entirely sure about that. We'll figure that out once we actually get to the uh, the placing of the first one, which we'll do here in a minute. And these are actually pretty large structures compared to a lot of the other machines. A lot of stuff in Railcraft, um, kind of like the Coke engine or Coke engines, the Coke furnaces. You know, they're they're not little small rinky dink things. They're pretty big. So we're gonna make a fairly decent sized creosote oil uh, container because we're gonna need to move. I think it's 180. Uh, give or take thousand over actually no 64 what is 64 times three that's 180 yeah it's almost 200 so it'll it'll be pretty big so we need we need 200 whatever the hells of it and then we're going to go and set up three engines over there the other problem we're going to have is the pipes it may be a little too far for it all to flow so I may have to put a, f a few chunk loaders down so that it all works. So anyways, we're gonna skip ahead until I get all of these rolled and then I'll show you guys how to make the different setups. All right, so now that we have rolled all of our stuff up, I guess I need to yank the peat out of that so it doesn't keep just grinding away. Uh, we need to make, I think we're gonna make, let's see, how many valves? Oh, that gives us four valves. That's all we're gonna need. Four valves will be sufficient. Now, valves are important. Uh, with your tank, when you get that thing set up, the only way you can take fluids in and out of your uh, tank is with valves. And I don't know if this is still accurate. Um, some of the stuff... Okay, let's see. Iron tank. Some of the information that I have could be a little outdated. So you may want to be careful uh, when you start doing some of this stuff. Where are my pains? There they are. Okay. God, they're hard to see there, man. I made a ton of these, and I was like, no, I know I've got pains. Um, valves are how you load the, the liquids on and out. And from what I understand, the liquids need to be, or the valves need to be on the second layer once you get started. Okay, that's going to give us eight. Uh, we are doing a five by five, and then we're going to go four up. So I need 
one, two, three. We're gonna go ahead and make a couple more. We're gonna make two more batches. That ought to be, 16 should be plenty for what we need. Uh, the valves are what allow you to, like I, sa like I said, uh, load and unload your tank. They, uh, the What we're doing right here, these will allow us to, the, the gauges are what allow us to actually see into the tank. And then these right here are the actual tank itself. And this is what must be, and this is where the bulk of our stuff is going to be made of. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to go ahead and max it out because I, I have a feeling we're going to use most of these. In fact, we may have to come back and end up making a little bit more. Okay, so now that we've got most of what I think our materials are going to make, or going to be needed, let's go and see if we can't plot this thing out. We're going to be placing it right up in here against this corner wall right here. I believe that'll be the nicest place for it. So let's go ahead and get our iron tank walls out. Now again, like I said, your base and your sides have to be made out of this. So one, two, three, four. Oh my god, that is going to be huge. Got four varieties. Three, three. Um, you know, I think, well... We'll see, that's that's pretty big, yeah. That's 25 on the top, that's 50. Uh, we're not going to have enough if we do it this way, but I think we're going to want the big one. Just because it looks freaking cool. Now, these are completely customizable, completely adjustable. So, uh, you can have them in any size of 3x3, 5x5, 7x7, and freakishly large 9x9. Now, the mathematics that I have for this is basically you take the... X, the Y, and the Z, and you multiply it all together, and then you multiply that times 16. And it kind of gives you an idea for how much space this is going to take. They're they're huge. Now, they can be four or eight tall. We're going to do four, I believe. Two, three, four. I believe four tall is going to be plenty big. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's going to be fine. But we could make this way bigger. Two, one, two. We're just gonna drag this over. Come on, there we go. And then boom, boom. Drag him over. And I think we're gonna run out of blocks here because I don't think Pyro did his math correctly. I don't think anybody's gonna be surprised by that. There we go. Perfect and beautiful. Okay, so now that we've got our base set up, this is the part where we can kind of customize it how we want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the top here. Just because, oh my god, we may actually have enough. Holy crap, just barely. That's just for the, we're not going to have enough for the side, so. Okay, so over here, um, you know, just to be difficult, we're going to go ahead and build, I want one tank valve right there. That means I can load it from the top if I want, which I think will look the coolest. Uh, but you want to have some on the bottom here so that you could access it if you so chose. And I'm going to have one on the left. Uh, I guess we'll do one from all sides. So as you can see, we can load fuel or take things out from any of these. Now, according to the tutorial that I'm looking at online, to access your fuel, like all of it, you need to have it on this bottom layer here. Not on the, the very bottom, but the wherever the base is down here. Okay, I don't think we're going to have enough of these to finish this off. So we're probably going to have to go make some more of these real quick. Yeah, we're definitely not going to have enough. There we go. Yep, we're going to need... Let's see... One, two, three, by three, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 more. All right, let me go and get those set up real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so now we've got our little tank almost complete. I saved this last little piece. We plug that in and boom, now we have a tank. As you can see, it is glorious. All the little spots cleared out. And you will actually be able to see the fluid that goes into here. And just to give you kind of the idea, this would be considered kind of one of the lower end tank sizes. Because, like I said, it's 3x3, 5x5, 7x7, 9x9, and then either 4 or 8 blocks tall. So this one right here can hold 2 million liquid. That's insane. 
That is that is a uh, oh my god, that's a lot of liquid. Damn, that's a lot of liquid. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rig this up, get the engines going over at the creosote setup, and then we're gonna see if we can actually get this thing pumping. I'm a little worried though that we may not have enough chunk loaders to get it running. So let's uh, let's see what happens. All right, so we have made it to our nice little chambers here. As you can see, we have about 180, well, actually not quite 180,000. We got quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and deploy these three engines here. Come on. Whoops. And boom. There we go. And then we need to make our three different red power torches. Put those there. All right. Whoops. Okay, so first torch down, and then we open you up, and we put you in. Boom. We should hopefully start seeing fluid. Yep. And then we drop you there. Right click. Put you in. Beautiful. And same here. Now hopefully, these are going to start pumping just all their fluid out. And as you can see, that's actually moving pretty quick. So that's, that's uh, actually not so bad. Okay. Well, the question now remains, and I don't know if I still have my little world anchor. I do. I don't know if he works. Um, since we're doing a server task, I'm going to go ahead and put in a few ender pearls. Let's see. Ender pearl. Let me turn creative mode on over here. Okay. Shit. Ender Pearl. Yeah, we don't. I don't usually use uh, world anchors, honestly, because I really don't need them all that much. All right, 12 hours. Okay, that should keep this area loaded. So I'm going to leave that in there for now. I don't think we're going to need 12 hours. Whoa. Oh, come on. There we go. We're just going to keep it running till these are drained, which hopefully won't take so long. Now, it does look like that's still draining. I, I'm assuming the only thing I can think of is these ones in the front are actually filling the pipes up and the back there can't keep up. All right, so we've got, is creative still on? Yeah. We're going to zip over to our tank real quick and we're going to see if that stuff will actually make it all the way over there. Hopefully it will. Because I really want to move these coke ovens to a place that's a little bit more convenient than way the hell over here in Egypt at our, at our original Mole Man rat base. As you can see, I have no idea what the hell that is. I don't, I don't think anybody does yet. But uh, you, you can see the server is coming along nicely. That right there is going to be a secret project that we will show you guys a little bit later on. Not quite ready to share that with y'all yet. And splat. Okay. So... This right here is where our fluid is going to come up from. And I'm just really, really hoping that it makes it. But yeah, 2 million fluid. That's like three Coke ovens is not even 20% of this. So that is, that is not even 10% of it actually. Yeah. So we, we'd be able to fill this thing up with about eight Coke ovens working pretty much full time. So this will provide pretty much all of the creosote oil that is needed for the server, hopefully. We'll see if, if the other guys are willing to utilize the awesome pyro setup. Oh my god. What the hell is going on? I think it's just mainly taking a little bit a little bit of time. We're going to go ahead and break this wall real quick so I can go on down and we can see if it's actually coming. Because I'm a little worried that there may just be too much length. I may need to go to the middle somewhere and put another world anchor down just to get all the fluid moving. That's a bummer uh, with the dire pack is there are no liquid transport, uh, what do you call it, uh, wireless transport or teleport pipes I guess is what they're called. There we go, English. Come on, where's the fluid? There it is. Well, it is working its way. So I know those chunks, at least some of those chunks down there are loaded. So maybe if I just kind of escort it here, it will follow its, it kind of uh, move on down. 
I just hope when these chunks get unloaded that the liquid isn't lost, because that, that would kind of blow. I worked real hard, AFK, while trees burned to make this liquid. I would really hate to see it, it disappear. And I'm a little bummed that three peat engines pumping hard, well, as hard as peat engines pump at one EU attack, isn't, like, just gushing this fluid. I mean, I was, I was expecting, like, some kind of, like, geyser effect, you know? Kind of like a fire hydrant when you bust one of those open and it just goes spurting all over the place. That's, that's kind of what I was hoping for with my creosote oil. Now, uh, you can use a variety of different liquids to fill these tanks up. You can use oil. You can use, I've heard, honey. I didn't even know honey was an actual liquid. But uh, if that's the case, then I will be using, uh, I'll be using one to store some honey here probably soon. Because I'll be using quite a bit of honey for certain projects if I can make them work. Well, liquid is still coming. Which makes me think it is still loading. Beautiful. Now we're going to get to see it climb up. Oh, you can see it's like a little thin. Oh, that's cool. You can see it's kind of working its way up. It kind of looks like one of those little, uh, like the Buildcraft energy pipe type setups. Oh, God. Are we up here yet? Come on. You can do it, little pipe. I will make this liquid go into this tank before the end of this video, damn it. Pyro needs a win. Okay, there it is. Now it's working its way up. Good God. So you can see, you know, it, it, it wasn't really going to make much sense to do this manually. You know, a little pipe at a time. We were, we were going to be here kind of forever. Can, can you imagine having to transfer all of this one bucket at a time? Whoa, pressed shift too many times. All of those sticky keys or whatever the hell it's called. Oh, come on. Are we seriously not coming yet? There it is. So I have no idea how long this is going to take. Uh, I don't think it's going to take too long considering we cleared out about 10,000 of the stuff fairly rapidly just while we were watching. Beautiful, beautiful. You turn the lights back on so we can see and hopefully don't get blown up by a creeper. And there it is. There's our first little bit of fuel. And it's coming in. Now, I chose to have this stuff load in through the top of the tank here just because I thought it would look kind of cool that way. And we'll see. It should be coming up through these pipes pretty quickly. There it is. There's our little, our first little spurt of, of, of goo. Now, we've got a pretty decent solid flow here. Whoops. And... Here it comes. Splurt, 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 splurt. And boom. We're in the tank. As you can see, it's slowly filling up. And if we hop down here, you can actually see the fluid starts pouring. Oh, sweet, dude. You can see it gushing in from the top. That is really cool. So anyways, I'm going to let this thing do its stuff. Hopefully it will all pump in without too much more work or effort on my part, specifically with chunk loaders. I'd hate to have to put chunk loaders all over that little stream area, but we may end up having to just to get it all over. Anyways, hopefully you guys are liking this video. If you do, please click the like button. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next clip.